From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Yeah. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It's Wake Up Board Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, practice observations. The pads come on. What did Corey scope out for us on Saturday? Baseball feeling the blues. Very painful sweep. What does it mean moving forward? And Pro Day, a huge success and maybe a new tradition at Florida State. Wake Up Board Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com, the website, 2475 Appalachian Parkway. Physical address, daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., $8.99. That is special because that half-pound all-black Angus beef burger, usually $12.99. Side dish of your choice as well, obviously. Great selection, straight fries, curly fries, onion rings, potato salad, coleslaw, broccoli, side salad, tater tots, or freshly cooked potato chips. Again, normally $12.99, but today from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., get on it for only $8.99, corner pocket bar and grill. And tomorrow, trivia night, 7 p.m. sharp. Go hang out at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Meet somebody cool. It'll change your life. Good people, good times. Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Warchant.com, your ultimate symbol sports source. Won't you hit the thumbs up if you're listening to us on YouTube? Five-star rating and review. It will uncork a review here. It's been a few weeks since we did that. Maybe don't want to do it too soon, too soon thereafter. But we always appreciate that kind of stuff. And subscribe to Warchant.com, the ultimate symbol sports source. Spring football in full gear. Softball team on the rise. Uh, basketball competing for a recruit, which as we record this a little too early, so we don't know where they're going to get that kid that's between Georgia Tech and and the Knowles, but always a bright future on the horizon for a Florida State fan, uh, as well as people that want to listen to Corey Clark because he's here now. Everybody, What's up, Corey? What's up, Aslan? How you doing, buddy? Oh, all right. I'm all right. How was your weekend? Uh, it was eventful. Um, actually, was at Corner Pocket making some, uh, well, I was at Corner Pocket watching some basketball, um, doing some gaming stuff as the as the games were being played. But yeah, I had a good time, buddy. Okay, good, good, good. Let's start with football then. I, I did not. Oh, met a guy, sorry, met a guy named, uh, oh, it was a Roland Sweets, Ooh, who works okay. at like a in a sugar cane plant or something. He does something with sugar, which I thought was uh, ironic with the last name or fitting, I guess not ironic, but big fan of ours, buddy. Nice. Um, nice. So he was very, very took a, got, got a picture taken with, even with Stephanie. He's a big fan of Stephanie. So that was cool, uh, Who cool to it? meet him. A yeah. uh, shout out to the guy from a week ago at the gym that walked up to me and didn't say anything, but held his phone out and showed me that he was listening to Jeff Cameron. Hmm. I was like, all right, cool. I guess it's all the same flag, right? Yeah, Let's we're all the you know? same umbrella, man. Yeah, yeah. so uh, he'll be 1 to 3 o'clock later today if you want to get in on that one. Let's talk about football. Corey, I was not at practice on Saturday, so you're my eyes and my ears and everything processing-wise. I, I did see – I don't know why everybody kind of took and ran with uh, some of the opening statement from Coach Norvell about uh, the drops yeah. that he saw, maybe a little too much for his liking. First yeah. day in pads. Um was it pronounced throughout the day? Was it a seven on seven thing, one on ones? Uh, what did you take away from Saturday? And just was that the top line headline from the day? Yeah, it was. Um, two things. Yes, it was. They they dropped a lot. I think I counted nine uh, oh, drops, yeah. like just straight up drops, not like contested catches they didn't make, but drops. Uh, the good news, and people don't laugh at this. It's true. Most of the drops were wide open guys. Which if you're if you're caring about the receivers and the offense. You know, half the battle is getting open, and they did a good job of getting open. Hakeem had a ran a great right right uh, route down the left sideline, and I think this was eleven on eleven, it was seven on seven or eleven on eleven. It definitely wasn't one on ones. It was team drills. It was a uh, like it would have been like a forty yard completion down the left sideline. Beautiful ball from DJ and uh, just off his hands, and he was so mad he threw it up against the wall. And Norvell's like, "Don't take it out on the wall. It's not the wall's fault." Um, but yeah, so there were uh, Malik Benson had what should have been like a 50 yard touchdown, didn't adjust to the ball at all. I think he, he might have lost it in the lights, like legitimately. It was such a weird um, angle back to the ball that I don't think he saw it. Um, but he was wide open. I mean, he was open. So again, the positive, and I, you know, I like I'm a half full kind of guy. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, the receivers were getting open uh, much more than they did the first two days, and the pads were on, so that mattered. Uh, the bad news was is when they were open, uh, they did some dropping. So that that wasn't great. But I thought the quarterbacks all were sharp. 
Was anybody immune from the drops? Was there like a receiver that you remember having a, a decent day or did everybody s- seem to be afflicted by the, uh... I mean, I honestly think it was nine by nine different guys. Maybe Destin had uh, two, but I think mm-hmm. it was nine by nine, but Portier had a really nice catch at 11 on 11 for about a 40 yard gain. He beat Shaheem Brown and then Vandravius and seven on seven uh, sprinted past Earl little for a 50 yard touchdown. So he caught, he held onto that one. And I don't remember Vandravius dropping any. Um, Lewayne McCoy, I don't remember dropping in either. Good. By the way, yeah. he had a uh, uh, he had another f- good practice and and made a great catch on in third down drills where uh, leap high point really leaping in the middle of the field to go snag a ball. Uh, Cam Fryer had a drop. He might have had two drops. Um, uh, well, we we'll have yeah. to call out the guys that dropped. I just want. Well, I mean, I did in the I did in the column. Like I yeah. I, I think I did anyway. Uh, and it's look, man, we get to watch. That's part of the deal. Is is if you draw in, I don't really. I mean, I do worry about drops if they're consistent. It was just a bad day catching the ball. But I thought the pat even with that, I thought the passing game with the receivers and the quarterback connection, other than again, you know, not catching it, I thought that was really I thought that was encouraging. The I thought the receiver I thought uh Jalen Brown uh had his best practice. Okay. Uh, he looked he looked good too. Was period three, did they go eleven on eleven this time or was it still against air? They did. It was weird, man. I don't know if it was a let. They didn't do. I guess it was uh, against air, but they also did real 11 on 11 teamwork before special teams, like right. period seven or something. How do offensive line hold? I was just kind of wondering, just in terms of like, was there a lot of breakdown or was there time and, and you know, pretty free and open play going back and forth between the offense and defense? Well, so I guess I would say like the people the group that you would expect might be frontline guys, you know, mm. starting guys. I thought they held up well, uh, but I will say this. Um, it doesn't matter who uh, Daryl Jackson goes up against. He's mm-hmm. a problem. Uh, he's beating double teams. They are double teaming him. He's pushing. He is pushing people backwards. And then um, our man, Lola Haya. Okay. Uh, that guy is an issue too. He, he is, he's good. Uh, that's, that's a, when you think about, uh, you know, Marvin Payton and Lola Haya. Hopefully Byron Turner overdrive kicks it in. Uh, I, I like that defensive end group. And then obviously uh, Farmer and Daryl Jackson and the kid from West Virginia kind of goes back and forth. Yeah. What's what he, what he looked like on Saturday or just in term, not maybe even so much how he looked like, but was it, was it mostly end that day or was it mostly interior or was it? It looked to balanced? me like it was mostly interior. Okay. Uh, but that might be a numbers thing. I, I don't know. I, I do think that Adam Fuller did mention they're going to start him off inside, but they're going to move him. They're, he's got the ability to move back and forth. But the point being, uh, they are getting real push uh, with, with 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 Jackson, Lola Haya, man. Lola Haya is just uh, he did a he had a drill. I won't name the kid. It was a tight end, which good luck tight ends trying to block this kid. But it was a t- it was a drill where it was basically three guys blocking two. And the two interior guys are supposed to try to double team the defensive tackle. And then the tight end or the tackle, offensive tackle, depending on who's the personnel, are blocking the defensive end. And he sent this tight end backwards about six yards violently. Like as soon as the snap, he just he just throttled him backwards um, so quickly and so violently. Um, it was uh, it was impressive to see, man. They, uh, I, I thought uh, the defensive line. You see where that could be a uh, that could be a strength of this team uh, when it's all said and done. Did the tight end does his name rhyme with Lyle Warlock? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. but it didn't. If you were worried about that, it was not him. All right, very well, very well. Um, passing game wise, I mean, is there anything that you saw from from DJ that, that seems to be a little bit maybe of a better groove, or does it still seem to be? Uh, you know, some moments punctuated by others that might not be as punctuated. Yeah, so I think I talked on Thursday that I thought Brock Glenn had the better day, best day on Thursday. I thought DJ was the best on Saturday. Um, uh, Brock still was pretty good. He threw a he threw a bat in that eleven on eleven drill I was talking about the period before special teams. Uh, he threw an interception right to Earl Little, um, and Earl Little also had another PBU. Like I know I talked about him getting beat for a touchdown, and I shouldn't even say that. Like I don't know if it's his responsibility to be. I assume it was because he's a slot corner and I think Van Dravis was lined up in the slot, but I don't know. He might've been thinking he had help over the top or whatever, but uh, uh, Earl Little has had the last two practices, I believe five PBUs and an interception. Uh, he's been okay. 
production. But but he's been okay there. Yeah. Um, and I think they like him like in the run game too. I think he'll be a pretty good tackler near the line of scrimmage. Um, but uh, yeah, so an 11, in a, overall DJ, I thought was really sharp. And it's weird too, the seven on seven, you've watched enough of those drills where you could throw to the running back in the flat almost any time you want. Literally mm-hmm. almost any time you want, and you're gonna you'll get a four yard completion, at least. And but it's the safe throw, and it, I, I it's odd. I think DJ does this because he's such a veteran and knows how important it is to like look downfield and work on the other things. But he never takes the check down. All right, good. I like that. I like. Well, that. you don't like it in a game if it's the I know, only thing that's but, open. But to your point, and I subscribe to what you're saying without even being there. But I, I know what you're saying, and that's been a bugaboo for me with other guys in the program. But carry on. I'm sorry. Yeah. So so he'll ha- so he'll he'll hold the ball, and you know how we used to always talk about. Uh, I think it was Duffy, right? He'd hold the like we saw him run up the middle more than we saw him throw it. Some of those drills because he just wouldn't release the ball and throw mm-hmm. it. So what DJ will do is DJ will look, look, look. And then instead of taking off and just running it and giving up on the play, like running up the middle and they blow the whistle, he'll he'll kind of mosey a little bit towards the line of scrimmage, but still look downfield and throw it. He will not, or he did not on Saturday, almost as if he was either under orders or decided himself, I know I can do that. I know that's there. And in a game, I will take that. And I do believe he will. But in this setting, when it's seven on seven, he is always looking at his receivers or tight ends. He do, he very rarely takes the check down, even if the guy could get five or six yards just by being there. Being there, and I don't want you guys to think that that's who he is as a player. I just think in that drill, it's so much more beneficial for everybody else involved, the quarterback yeah. and the receivers, trying to get on the same page to look, continue to look downfield and see if you can find something in the middle of the field. And I know he found Destin Hill for like a twenty-five yard gain. Uh, on one of those plays and um and had another throw that was I think it was one that might have been dropped um but he yeah I I that's that struck me how unwilling he was to do that but I think it's for the benefit of the DBs and the right wide receivers to get a really good rep yeah and unless I get it how you do one thing is how you do everything and you know there might be concern that well you know if, if you're going to force it in practice it's going to end up being a habit and you'll do it in the game but I He's played enough football, and, and right. I really think it's it is known. It's probably even implicitly stated almost. Where I was like, "Hey, man, go ahead, go ahead, and push the ball down." Right, and I wouldn't be happen. we wouldn't be saying that if it was Brock Glenn or Cromenhawk doing it. You know what I mean? Right. Like if yeah, I yeah. think of Brock Glenn or Cromenhawk are making those, I like no, 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 man, just take the easy throw right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. when you're not when you don't see it like DJ does. Maybe take the easy throw. Always take the easy throw. But DJ's thrown, I don't know how many passes he's thrown in college. A thousand. He's you know, he's I, just in games I'm talking about. I, I he I think they give him a little leeway to kind of for that drill's sake to throw it in the middle of the field. Um, you know, when we spoke to Coach Norvell at the luncheon, he was asked about injuries, and he's like, Yeah, you know, everybody should be good to go. And if they're not, they'll definitely be ready for preseason camp. But give me a week or so uh, and let me figure it out kind of before I, I, I rule a guy out or not. Should we should we ask him Tuesday after practice or after Thursday scrimmage about whether or not he's got an update on that? I would say I think either one Tuesday or Thursday would be good. I think Tuesday it been it will have been a week. Um, he should know. Um, so yeah, it's up to you. It's up to you, buddy. Right. But, however you want to however you want to handle it. Segway to you mentioned the offensive line, maybe some of the front line guys if if they're, if they're going to be there, they'll, they'll be able to hold up. But I know after practice on Saturday, he was. I think he might have been asked about some of the other. Uh, younger guys, which uh, shout out everybody. I, I was in the same boat as you. I wasn't at practice, so I had to rely on listening to the interviews. And all right, I get it. Like you wish you could hear the questions better, but you get the gist of what's being asked. So we can all we can all yeah. carry on and be fine with it. But you know, he mentioned like that that trio. I guess which is you know mainly left of that of that class. That how hard know. would it be for you? And I'm 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 thinking about this on the fly, and I know it would be hard. I know yeah. we get up those videos immediately. Right. But is there a way to go back in and edit like the the gist of the question, like on Bryson Estes? It just like in a caption as as he's looking at the as he's looking at the questioner. So people know for yeah. that particular case, it was a it was a question about uh, Bryson Estes. Yeah, I mean, we could either do that or we could just we could lift the audio of the question so you could hear it because like the his audio Norvell's fine because the microphone's on him. Right. But we could the spots in the audio where it's not him. We could go in there and just 
clip clip and then raise the, the audio up too. but it would then take more time. And, All right. All um, right. and if we came back and did it, that would be a second video. And then the views are getting different kinds of numbers and data and um, effects, uh, whether or not Corey Clark can fly first class to Ireland or business right. class to Ireland. So right. Things of that nature. Understood. Right. Understood. One of these days, you know, maybe I'm telling you, there's, there's this parabolic mic, which are those, it's like a half orb. It's like a, a plastic looking thing. You've probably seen people on the sidelines holding them up. It's got like a microphone in it, but it's got a, like a, a plastic dish wrapped around it. Well, it's $800, but apparently a lot of teams use that to pick up the audio of the question being asked in a press conference, but it, it, it does a really good job of just picking up that question. And then the answer, it does a really good jo job of like blocking out all the other noise in a room or around you in the environment. I, I've seen demonstrations of it and it looks pretty impressive, but I don't want to be like, Hey, Gene, give me $800 to buy this thing. And then it turns out to not be good because right. that would not be good for me. But I digress back to the, to the point there, you know, there's only maybe like three guys that are not true freshmen. I don't know. Maybe Lucas Simmons could be possibly in the mix. Otto could possibly be in the mix, but it seems like when you think about the, the, the top end guys that have played so much football, Keandre Jones and Maurice and Darius and, and Rob Scott and Jeremiah Byers, et cetera. Um, like th that next tier behind them seems to probably be that trio, right? Like Armella, Estes, and Jalen Early. Um, were those guys involved in the mix? How, how are they kind of coming along? And uh, I know a lot of people are wanting to see those guys take a step. And Norvell even said as much. Like it, it's it's time for them to kind of take a step. Do you, you sense at least maybe them not playing with a level of urgency? At least they're being kind of coached maybe with a little better level of urgency. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're they're you know in the mix here early on in the spring for sure. Uh, they're getting work with all types of personnel. Uh, I do think that they, uh, um, you can tell early gets coached to me anyway. It, and I this was like a ten minute window where I was watching the O line on Saturday. I thought he got coached a little differently than some of the other guys. As in, they know it's important for him to come along. Mm. They believe in him. They think he might be something. Um, so they were, they, he got some extra attention in a few of the drills. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Um, and they don't do that for the kids. They don't think can play or will be a, a factor. So, uh, I think that's a good sign for him. The attention he got, not just from Atkins, but Norvell too, on, on a couple of, uh, different plays. Uh, yeah. So you, you see it. Sure. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, the thing is, I mean, you know, who three of the starters are, if they're healthy, right? I guess. I mean, I, we think Darius is going to start somewhere. Um, he wouldn't his last year not play. I feel like that's four then. If you're gonna, that'd be four. Cause yeah, you're right. Because of Byers, yeah. So yeah. Byers, Scott Smith, and Darius Washington. Yeah. I feel like you kind of know you got four guys. Mm. Um, starting August 24th in in Ireland. So there's yeah, it's basically a, you know a three way fight for one guard spot maybe. Yeah. With the kid from Alabama, Ferguson, uh, Ferguson. Ferguson. I always want to call him Terrence Marshall, <laughs> Terrence Ferguson. Yeah. Um, and then Richie Leonard and Keandre uh, Jones, Keandre Jones and Armella. Like, so they got a uh, Keandre Jones too. Like they've got a lot of experience They're I think it's going to be the same thing where they play, they play eight or nine guys, uh, honestly, uh, maybe depending on the matchup, somebody plays more than another time. I don't know. It's going to be a, uh, a lot, a, so, a lot similar to what we saw last year. I think, as far as the rotation, I do think. I, I, I hope. I guess that one of them is a recruitable, a kid they that they recruited themselves and brought in the last couple of years that takes a big step and can work himself into that rotation. I know it's not sexy, uh, but we have to talk about this, and it's it's a you know, God love them, like way to be, way to persevere. Are we at a point now? I remember being at practice on Thursday and they break out from special teams and they start doing field goal kicks. And part of me is almost like, I don't need to watch this. I know it's going to happen. Like Fitzgerald early on. And I hope I just didn't jinx. It. I hope he wasn't yeah, starting on Saturday, really. but it, it feels like Flores State's at a point now. And I'm not saying he's Lou Groza material. I don't He's not a Guayo part two or, or Seabass. Like Flores State's at a good spot right now with their place kicker. Like Ryan Fitzgerald was, He's, he's been stroking it early in camp. I mean, the, 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 they usually go like, I think from 30 to 40, I think those are the, the, the yardages he's been doing and the forties have been pure and, and, and sailing, uh, past the, uh, the crossbar. So, um, that's something we haven't talked about through four practices, three, three, pra three practices. Yeah. So just want to tip the cap to the guy from Coolidge, mm. Moultrie, Georgia, shout out Fitz, you keep it up. 
Yeah, I haven't tracked any of his kicks all spring. I mean, it's three practices because I think that tells you number one, there's he, they didn't bring anybody to compete it with him. Uh, you know, a kid that actually competed at a high level like they did last year with Keltner. Um, so he, it's his job, but also he was lights out last year. He was great. He was great, and a kick that will always be lost to history because of what happened the next day. That kick to put him up ten against Louisville in the rain. From I don't know what it was, 42, 43 yards. I mean, it was still a seven point game with a few minutes to go, even after the fifth sack. And then he drill and they don't get a first down. And you think about where they were at that time a year ago where they wouldn't even try the kick in NC State because they didn't trust them. And then the next year they don't even really try to get a first down in the rain because they're so confident in that kid. And he splits it right down the middle to give him a 10 point lead and essentially ice the game for him. Um but it got lost to history because that game didn't matter. They might as well not have played it uh, because it didn't matter uh, the next day anyway. But uh, yeah, he was he was sensational last year, man. Uh, no, he doesn't have he doesn't have the leg strength of Aguayo, but his his year last year was better than Aguayo's last year at Florida State. I think percentage wise and clutch kick wise, and he didn't he didn't get a kick blocked and run back for a touchdown to lose a game. So. Fitzgerald's always going to have that over Aguayo. Never forgive you, Roberto. Yeah. All the yeah, good make a, you hey, did. Hey, make a tackle, man. Let's get to <laughs> overtime. Yeah. Fitzy hit 45 in the first quarter and then 33 and 40 in the uh, fourth quarter. In the 41. Yeah. That was the one that iced it, right? That was the yeah. last one. Yeah. Correct. And it wasn't a, I mean, four it was plays, a, negative two yards. Yeah. And it was a, it was at that time, the rain was really starting to pick up and he just smoked it. Just uh, no, no, no worry at all just it's uh that was really cool what he ended up becoming last year after his struggles the year before he turned into like right one of the best kickers in the country yeah uh, yeah. yeah what, yeah. what was his what did he end up last year how many kicks did he miss i don't have that in front of me you're asking me uh, to do we could ch- probably look that up asking we'll look hey do. we'll look that up during the break everyone um almost i'm like i'm gonna type ryan fitzgerald and get uh fitzpatrick stuff but he was uh 90.5 percent he was 19 of 21 last year That'll play, right? Oh yeah, that'll play. I can't remember what he missed. I guess that's probably the more important thing, right? Like, even yeah, whatever the two ones he missed, I have no recollection of what they were. I can tell you this: it didn't cost them a win because <laughs> they won them all. So good for them. But I think he had a big one against Pitt, even to put him up by three scores. Like he yeah. he just made, uh, and I know it was Pitt, but he he made a he made just big kicks, man. Yeah, and um, good, and he was good all year. <laughs> I. I should bite my tongue here, but so I, I, I pulled up the Louisville, Florida. Uh, I type in like Florida state, Louisville, ACC, and it's the ESPN.com like game page of it and everything. And it's got the, it's got copy from the AP for the gamer. Do you know what the head you want me? I'm, let me read you the headline for that story. This was the headline. This was the associated press. This isn't from ESPN. This right. isn't, but it was on ESPN's website, right? Correct. But it was, because it was, they use AP for a yeah. uh, news story. Sometimes yeah. the headline, December 3rd, 2023, 126 a.m. Headline. Number four, Florida State beats number 15, Louisville, 16-6 for ACC title, but could miss playoff at 13-0. Yeah. Who wrote that? <laughs> even, even the AP was in on the uh yeah. was in on the fix. Uh no pen on that, no name, just just says AP. And if you scroll mm. at the bottom, it doesn't give me the person's name either. Um uh, I don't even know who the AP writer was in this. It doesn't part. matter, but they, they, Hey, yeah, we were the only ones that were dumb enough to think that <laughs> beating a top 15 team by 10 points with your third string quarterback would be impressive enough to keep your ranking. Oh gosh. Um, in the hours afterwards, I hope we all consume lots of Vimer and mood plus, uh, mm-hmm. might need to send a box over to friends on campus uh, after the weekend they had, uh, but it's all right. The sun's going to come up and you're going to take your vitamin energy and you're going to feel better. Because it's clinically proven, everybody. VitaminEnergy.com, promo code WordChampBogo, WordChampBOGO. Energized for seven hours more in most cases with 260 milligrams of all natural caffeine. Boost your mood, boost your focus, boost your immune system, boost your pump in the gym. I'm not kidding. All that is available and possible by going to VitaminEnergy.com and trying out one of their varieties. Maybe get the variety pack, get all of them, or figure out exactly what you do want to get a little bit better at. Maybe the mood needs to get a little bit more positive and cheery, Aslan. Or maybe the pump's got to get a little bit better. It's all there for you. Just go to VimeEnergy.com, use that promo code WarchampBogo, WarChamp, B-O-G-O. Shake it and take it. Energy with benefits. VitaminEnergy.com. 
I had the luxury, Corey, of, of not having to watch any of the baseball from this past weekend, but uh, mercy. Florida State entered the week with 19 wins, um, and they exited the weekend with 19 wins, uh, losing three games uh, to Clemson and pretty much bad to awful to, to terrible fashion. I guess it, it might have progressively gotten worse as the, the weekend went on, but they dropped 15-5 to five in game one of the doubleheader on Saturday, 9-8 to eight in the second half of the doubleheader on Saturday. And then on Sunday uh, to cap it off a 14 to 12, a sort of last shot in the gut. Um, And they all were, I mean, I I guess really the story is probably that, that second half doubleheader, the the second game where Jamie Arnold threw an absolute gem. Um, For some of us, that might've been off the grid. Uh, Walk us back through, I guess, just how miserable ultimately that game was as well as Sundays. Well, so they start the doubleheader. Uh, by hitting a grand slam in the first inning. Jaime Ferrer hits a grand slam in the first inning. They're up 4 nothing before an out's been recorded. And then they get outscored 15-1 to over the next six innings. Uh, Cam Leiter doesn't get out of the third, uh, which when, when, when what happens with Arnold the next the next game, clearly Arnold's the, the guy. And we knew that anyway just by the numbers, but Arnold's the best pitcher on the team. Uh, he might be the only good pitcher, like good pitcher. Leiter has moments. There's some other guys that have had moments. But Jamie Arnold is the ace. He's the guy that you know is going to compete and is going to silence a lot of bats uh, the rest of the season. So they lose the first game. They get run ruled uh, the first game, 15 to 5. So Clemson hits a walk off in the seventh inning because I get there's that. Maybe I think there's the rule, period. But maybe it's just in double headers, but I think it's just a rule. I think it, it might. I know the SEC has introduced the mercy rule a few years ago. I think the ACC might have been might have done the same thing for conference games. OK. All. all right. Well, so they uh, so they they got run ruled in the first game, 15 to five. So they're not undefeated anymore. And then honestly, man, I, I thought I was really encouraged. How could you not be by the way they came back after getting thumped to have an eight one lead in the ninth inning? Like they Clemson's good. Clemson can hit. Jamie Arnold was awesome. Jamie Arnold is awesome. They scored. He walked the first two guys of the game. That's how they scored their run. And after that, they did jack squat. They got one more hit, hit the rest of his innings, and that was a bloop double that James Tibbs probably should have caught. That's it. And we'll get to outfield defense in a second. Um, so so other than that, Jamie Arnold was spectacular. And they had an 8-1 lead in the ninth inning. And I was watching the game on the ESPN Plus. Got, and, the, you know, they're Clemson broadcasters. And they're giving Arnold a lot of credit. And they're like, look, looks like the Knolls are going to even up this series here. They, there's still three more outs to get. But looks like it'll be the rubber match tomorrow at 1 p.m. And 20 minutes later, Clemson has won the game. Uh, because FSU just completely melted down. Um, Hudson Rowan starts the inning by hitting a kid and then walking a kid. And the way you give up eight runs in an inning to lose in the last inning always comes back to walks. Walks are errors. Yeah, free bases, right? Always, always, always. So that's how it starts. And then Link made what I thought was his worst move of the weekend. And I'm not putting much of any of this on Link. Um, but this was a bad one, I thought. He brought in, um, is it John Abraham? John Abraham, yeah. So in that in that instance, when you're up 8-1, to one, and then the first two runners reach base against a really good offense, and you don't have a lot of reliable arms that you know about yet in the pen, don't mess around with it. I know Armstrong had pitched earlier in the day two innings, so maybe he's not available. Go with Oxford. Go to Dorsey earlier. Go with an arm that you trust can throw strikes and not walk people and get outs. So anyway, Abraham comes on. He's pitched six innings all year, immediately gives up a three-run homer, gets down to the next hitter, but then gets a fly out. Then Aslan, the game was lost. They're up eight to four with one out, nobody on base. They hit a fly ball to left field. The wind's blowing out, so it's it it should have been a routine fly ball, but the wind blows it to the little uh that hill they have right in front of the fence. Okay. You know Clemson? I don't know if you know that. They like don't old, have a warning like, track. They have a hill. They call like it old a minute terrace. old minute made level hill. Yeah, but it's all throughout it's the whole field. It's not just uh, in the center field. The whole okay. they they don't have a warning track. You have to start running up a hill. How cute. How it's cute. Bizarre. Yeah. But anyway, Jordan Williams, who's the defensive replacement, somehow doesn't even get a. I mean, the ball's in the air forever. He's tracking it. He's underneath it. He squats and falls down. The ball lands right next to him, doesn't even touch his glove. Instead well. of eight to four, two outs, nobody on base, they now have a runner on second, one out, down by four. Abraham, of course, walks the next kid. And now you're in a real situation. 
Dorsey comes in, gives up a single and a grand slam, the game's tied. I just thought going to Abraham in that spot, but again, if Jordan Williams makes that catch, they win the game. It's too, I just I just think baseball is funny like that. That I think they lose their hope. Like it's two outs, nobody on base, eight to four. I think that's a ball game. But he didn't catch it. So anyway, they blow the game. Dorsey completely melts down after the grand slam, walks the next two guys. They take him out, give up a game-winning hit. The game's over. So that's an awful loss. You could argue, Aslan, it's the worst day a 19-0 baseball team has ever had. You get run ruled and then give up eight in the ninth inning to lose by a run. That's that's some bad stuff. But again, the next day, Sunday, Aslan, they show a lot of what for? Gumption, yeah. They get up 11-2. to two. In the sixth inning, they're up 11 to two. Whitaker's p- pitching well. They're, they got a nine run lead on a very good team after a heartbreaking day the day before. Showing a lot of what for. But unfortunately, in Clemson, they play nine innings. And Florida State can't get to the ninth inning without giving up 12 runs in the next three innings. And so they lost that game to 14 to 12. They scored 25 runs in three games and lost them all. Uh, they're, other than Jamie Arnold, who gave up one earned run in seven innings, the rest of the staff pitched eight, 16 innings, 16 and a third innings, and gave up, uh, what would that be, 37 runs? Ugh. 37 runs in 16 innings, the rest of the staff. And that includes Whitaker and Leiter, who weren't horrible. Yeah. But the bullpen was a abject horror show. And... Uh, you know, they're 19 and three now. The offense was really good. The defense, again, I think they made one error. I mean, the Jordan Williams thing didn't count as an error. It should have, but it didn't. Um, but uh, I think they made one error all weekend. So they have a very good defense, and we know they can hit. And they have a great starting pitcher. It's, there's other question marks, though. All right. So that, that was my quick four minute, wasn't no, quick, was but that was my four minute wrap of how you get swept. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, they hit, I think as a team, Aslan, I think they hit 12 home runs. Florida state did this in a weekend. Yeah. In a weekend. And didn't win one single game and win one game. Yeah. James Tibbs hit two on, uh, Oh, not only that. So Tibbs hit two on Sunday. Um, but Max Williams hit, I think two during the weekend. It also literally was robbed of two home runs. Oh. Guys went over the fence and left and brought him back twice on Max Williams, who continues to hit in the worst luck I've ever seen a kid hit in. I'm all he does is make a 108 mile an hour outs. Uh Um, So I think when you look at this baseball team uh, and I want to get back to pro day in a second uh, when, when we're done there, because I thought that was interesting. It was actually interesting. Um, um, But uh, you know, there's so we, we knew we would find people kept talking about the baseball team. And I'd say, I'd say, let's, let's wait, let's wait. Let's see what we'll know a lot more about Clemson uh, after Clemson. The weird thing is Aslan, the bullpen and the pitching staff is the reason they swept Notre Dame because they didn't hit all that well. Yeah. They scored like 14 runs for the series. So it's not like the bullpen has been a train wreck the whole season. They pitched pretty well for the most part. That's why I wanted to kind of quickly point out with, with John Abraham, it, he, it was Western Carolina and Michigan state, New Orleans and Stetson, but going into the series against Clemson, he had thrown seven and two thirds in what were five separate appearances 11 strikeouts allowed only three hits and two earned runs. Yeah. I think he's, he was part of the plan. I mean, and, and obviously I guess maybe some of the calculus changes. I, I hope he's able to get himself right, but it, Carson Dorsey, that's more of a concern, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Back, so he, he allowed a grand slam on Saturday and Sunday. Like go he ahead. Did. He, so he allowed the game tying. He allowed the game tying grand slam on Sunday, which in all honesty was pretty wind dated. But it was still a grand slam, still a home run. Uh, the win was really, it was like Wrigley uh, there on, on on Saturday. And then on Sunday, he came in because the uh, Oxford and then Noah Short just couldn't throw strikes there in the seventh oh, inning. Even Oxford it, was struggling? Well, yes, he struggled to throw. He he got out of the sixth mm-hmm. inning and then I think walked maybe two two or three. They walked in two runs Great. in the seventh inning. Great. And then Dorsey, Dorsey was one of them. And then Short walked in one, and then I think Dorsey walked in one. And then Dorsey gave up a grand slam to the same kid that hit the game time grand slam off him the day before, which I don't know if that's ever happened in the ACC. That a kid, a reliever, a closer has given up a grand slam to the same exact batter oh, two games gosh. in a row. Well, um, I'm just going to avoid that guy. So maybe we do have hope. With well, but I, I, 
I think what you wonder about, man, and what I because baseball is such a mental sport. Well, everything is mental. Every sport is mental, but baseball, especially, man, is like you. you he was the one guy. He was the bullpen arm, right? He was the ace of the bullpen. And he just gave up grand slams and back-to-back games to lose games, huge games, at Clemson. Can he recover from that? That's what I want to know. He pitched great again in Gainesville, which is a pretty tough place to pitch, too. Um, He pitched well against them. But where is his confidence level going to be at the next time he gets a situation like that? Because he melted down in Clemson. There's no other way to say it. He just was awful. And they needed him to not be awful, and he was. So can he bounce back from that um, and become the closer they're going to need him to be? Because I don't know what other answers you got out there. He He's your best arm. He's been your best reliever all season. And he was horrible in two huge moments um, up in Clemson. And you wonder if he can come back from that. Because we've seen it a lot, right? We've seen a lot of teams and a lot of guys that they have a bad weekend. And this goes for the whole team. You know, a, a th- it's a three-game losing streak that real quickly can come become become five or six. Mm. You know, that's what happens in this sport. You know, they should have won. In my opinion, they should have won two of those games. They should have. They should be coming back from Clemson, twenty-one and one, and five and one in the conference. But they blew two of them. Huge, just uh, meltdowns. And now they got to play Florida. So is it about to be a four-game losing streak? And now all of a sudden, where is this team that thought it was awesome, that was 19-0, is now on a four-game losing streak? Where is their confidence? But Dorsey is a is a, uh, is a a really big question mark moving forward because that w- it's not just – everybody gives up runs, man. And all closers are going to give up a um, a bomb. It's just that, – that happens. It's baseball. But he's never dealt – he's never been on this stage before, and he's never had something like that happen to him back-to-back games. And it's it's easy to just say flush it and forget it, but can he? Will yeah. he? That's that's what we got to yeah. figure out. And going back to the, uh, was it Armstrong? That's his name, right? No, John Abraham. John Abraham. Sorry, I always want to call him John Armstrong. Abraham. Andrew Armstrong might be the best reliever now. Yeah, Carson Dorsey's I guess. But then down. he he didn't pitch yeah. well on in oh, that first game either. Great. Um, awesome. No, nobody did. Literally, clearly, Jamie nice Arnold pitched great. Everybody else was either mediocre or terrible. Um, <laughs> But uh, and, and again, this was from a bullpen that had been pretty darn good all year yeah. and was great against Notre Dame. But what I was going to say about um, Abraham. Uh, Abraham is that um, he had never been at like I didn't like that Link treated that like it was a normal eight to one lead in a normal eight to one game. This th- this was a game you absolutely had to have. Do not let it. He's playing in enough baseball games to know that it can get dicey real quick. And in that instance, treat it like it's a five to one lead. Not eight to one because you give up a bomb on your first batter, all of a sudden you're in trouble. Uh, I just did, I thought that was a time to go to a veteran arm that you knew could throw strikes. Like if you throw, you could have had, you could have had a position player. If they throw strikes, they're not going to score eight runs in an inning. You're going to line out, ground, hard ground out or fly outs. That said, Abraham did get a fly out that his left fielder just completely botched, uh, which probably cost them the game. So, Nobody to blame, but then Link could point to Sunday and be like, look, see, I don't got anybody to throw. Mm. I don't got any good options back here. It wouldn't have mattered, Corey, and I, it's that's fair. But, uh, hey, man, the offense is good. Yeah. Tibbs can hit. They all can hit. Next up, as Corey said, Florida on Tuesday, 6 o'clock out in Jacksonville, and then back home this weekend against Louisville uh, for a Thursday Friday, Saturday series. How about that? Oh, geez, man. They're right back at Hey, that's the beauty about baseball, though, right, Aslan? You'll get to feel sorry for yourself for it long. Is. Louisville 15-9. and nine. They were coming off a series against Wake Forest in which they dropped uh, two of the three games. Uh, it was in Winston-Salem. Wake Forest, pretty good. We'll see how that goes. Hope you've been doing pretty good on your picks for March Madness. Brackets probably not intact, but keep picking winners out there, everybody. Keep trucking. Sweet 16 time. MyBookie.ag's got you covered. And when you sign up for the first time and use a promo code WARCHANT, you'll get an instant cash deposit bonus. Pretty cool, right? Just typing seven letters, eight letters, WARCHANT. Figure it out. I was only, I've been working here for six years. Get you that instant cash deposit bonus. Corey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a breather, and then tomorrow I'll be back and give out some games. I'll probably give three or four games, and I'm not going to rank them in any sort of level of confidence, but I just want you folks to take the, the picks I give you. Look at them, and if there's one you don't like, that's totally fine. I think I'll be able to. I'm, I'm not doing terrible overall, but if like I have to pick you a parlay, I cannot guarantee it for you. But if you want to play them all single games, 
I think we'll be up. I think we'll be up on the whole. So that's all I can really give you, folks. My bookie again, give me that promo code WarChant with that instant cash deposit bonus. Promo requires fifty dollar minimum deposit and rollover requirement of one time deposit total, including bonus for withdrawal. For full terms and conditions, visit mybookie.ag slash about dash us. Uh, Fifteen seconds left in the read, Corey. Purdue winning it all. Ooh, sure, man. That would be a feel good story. I'm rooting for him, so I hope Purdue does. And plus, our, our man that always make fun of the football program. Yeah, Noyler. I want them to feel good. That was a, a very uh, impressive opening weekend for Purdue, so I hope they do win it all. MyBookie.ag, bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Yeah, Corey, so Pro Day was Friday. Did, did you wake up with, uh, with the birds, with the, with the, the chickens, and go out there and, and, and see what was uh, on the field for all these scouts to drool over? I, well, not with the birds. I woke up a little later. I got there. I actually timed it perfectly. I got there right. Like it said, it started at nine, but they did the vertical jump indoors where none of us could see it anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I got there right when they were starting the bench press at like 10 o'clock. Uh, so I timed it out perfectly. It was great. Um, and they did a really good job, man. Like, I don't know. I wasn't at it last year. And quite frankly, what has been the reason to go to a Florida State Pro Day here in the last few years? It's always been one or two guys that had any chance of getting drafted. Um, but they put a, they had a video board. And they were showing it like they were showing the bench presses and the routes. Like when Johnny oh. and Keon were going through the position drills, they they had that on the video board. So even if you couldn't see it because the scouts were in your way, you could be on the video board watching it. Awesome, man. Well, I know the bench press was a, a huge success for lots of guys. Uh, Trey Benson, I think 22 or 23. I don't know if you ever got clarification on just what he finished off with. Kalen Deloach stroke yep. 225, 23 times. Good yep. grief. Fabian, 26 reps. Casey Roddick, 27. Dimitri Manuel, 21. Uh, Tatum Bethune, 19. Akeem Dent, 16. Robert Cooper, welcome back. Uh, he had 21. So strong like bull out there. Mm. Um, Rashad was in the house. Uh, and then I, I think a lot of the guys that shown. Right, shown, shine, shown. Yeah, I think shown. And, I think you can shown. Yeah, the guys that did really well in Indianapolis yeah. and made a lot of money for themselves still came back. Some of them didn't do anything, but they were there to support their teammates, and that goes into the whole B of the climb and the brotherhood. And that was probably pretty cool to see. I imagine being there for. Yeah, and I, I, you know, Norvell's a smart guy, man. Like they had the leg. This was Legacy Weekend, right? Uh, oh, yeah, Warwick yeah. Dunn was back in town. Rashad Green was back in town. Um, Jermaine Johnson was back in town. Uh, but I think Jermaine's here a lot, so that doesn't that's not nearly a surprise. Um and uh but uh I was I almost said something, but I'm not I'm not going I'm not delving into that subject. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Check okay. out Jermaine Johnson's Instagram, everybody. <laughs> Good job, Jermaine. Good job, man. Good job, Good buddy. Grief. Good grief. Uh it's something. Uh, and uh so but yeah, so I think that just it's smart to now we had a, it was a big recruiting weekend tied in with legacy weekend. And, oh, yeah, also, hey, guys, recruits, if you just want to stop by on Friday maybe or you, you see all these NFL scouts that come to our pro day now, it's pretty enticing, right? Like, look at all these guys. Uh, so, no, I, I just thought the whole thing was really – it was really neat, man. It must have been cool for Norbell to, to – I you know, I was thinking about him looking around, and not only are there, you know, 30 NFL scouts there, the GM for the Bucks is there, um, Todd Light. Is it Todd Light? Light yeah. Light? licked um but uh you know he's verse is obviously there fisk is there you've got you know, potential first round picks keon's there but then yeah work done rashad green on and on and on uh just it was it was i, I think he probably feels pretty cool about that that this program is getting to a point where number one it was i can tell you from my perspective it was just really cool that pro day at florida state mattered again like that was neat they, they, there were that many people on hand and that stuff mattered. And that also that, uh, um, you know, it felt like a real program again. Like you, you see the, you see the past, you had the future with some recruits there. It's just, all of it is like, it's a, it's a good place to be right now. It's a good place for Florida state to be. I'm glad he didn't go to Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Same, same. Uh, Akeem, we uh, heard apparently, I shouldn't say we, I wasn't there, but you know, war chant, Ira, Matt, whoever else is out there. Uh, ben Spicer, shout out to him holding the fort down. Uh, some of the scouts said they had Akeem like in the in the high four threes, low four four. So that's good for Akeem. He obviously wasn't able to do any of that stuff in Indianapolis. So glad he was able to to perform well. Yeah, he was fast, man. So I timed him. 
I, I tweeted about this, but I timed them on my iPhone, wa- my iPhone stopwatch. Oh, nice. Yeah, I had official, them at official, official, very official. I had them at four, three, one. Uh, and so I showed them that and it was really kind of a way to get like a like I was walking past them. I'm like, hey, man, this is what I had you at. He's like, oh, word. And I go, yeah. I go, what did you hear? And he goes, uh, was how was my Akeem Din impression just now? By the that way, that was spot on. Oh, yeah, geez. watch out, Frank Caliendo. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, and uh, and uh, he goes, oh, I they I they told me four three eight, which is look, yeah. I think the fastest time at the combine for a safety was four four one. Now I know pro day times always seem to tick up a little bit, but that was certainly a box that was checked. Oh yeah, Akeem Dent can really run. Any, I mean, sixteen on the bench press ain't nothing. No, that's pretty impressive too. Yeah, I th- I, yeah, and he did. I thought he did pretty darn well in the position drills too. So, and they said, I don't know who was running the 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 L drill, the three cone drill, whatever it's called. Yeah. But uh, he, the guy running it, because uh, Akeem was upset that he slipped at one point. He man, he goes, "Don't worry, man. That's a good. That's gonna be a good time." So right. yeah, so uh, I thought I thought he pl- he did well enough that maybe somebody will take a chance on him in one of the later rounds. All right. Also, as Corey mentioned, it was Legacy Weekend, which uh, is also now. Uh, a moment where they'll celebrate some of these past stars. I think Jermaine might've been the first guy that was uh, honored. In this but they sort get of their fashion. bricks, right? They yeah. get their all American bricks. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. For being all American. So Jamie, Jared verse and James Rosenberry. Yeah. A long snapper, all American. They all got their bricks uh, on Saturday. Uh, ben Spicer filmed the most of that ceremony, maybe the whole entire darn thing. So go check that on our YouTube page. If you haven't seen it already. So yeah, man, what a, this is like vision, right? This is like having vision for, for more than just coaching a football team. This is like creating a program, a sustainable program. Yeah. Uh, because you're building, as you mentioned, Corey, the, the, the past is here, the future and the, and the present is all kind of merging and it's yeah, man. Uh, this was like a, it was sort of hastily thrown together. I feel like the first time with Jermaine, like nobody really knew what was going on, but it feels like now that you know, Jameis has been back to get his brick and uh, you know, Jared and, and Jamie and, and, Rosenberry here this other weekend. You know, this is probably going to be a really uh, something that we'll look forward to circle on the calendar where it's like, all right, this is like, we need to know when legacy weekends happening. Cause it's going to be a really good time to uh, hang out. So I, I'm sure it's probably going to always fall around pro day. I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. And what I thought was cool too, just thinking about um, this current team is like uh, next year's pro day. This might be the norm now. Like, I, I, I don't know that you can expect that you're going to have 12 combine invitees every year. And maybe 12 to 13, you know, probably 11 or 12 guys that are potentially draftable. But next year, you're going to have a lot. You know, or I think next year, you're going to have a, at least as many guys working out as you did this year. And maybe that's just in perpetuity is that this becomes one of those spots again where you're always having a dozen or so guys every year that are getting looked at by scouts on your pro day. It becomes an event again where you can invite recruits like you couldn't invite recruits really two years ago because it's like, what are you just going to watch Jermaine? bench like this isn't an event uh but you know i i think now obviously you you in their stars like jared verse is a star now he didn't do i think verse was the only one that didn't do anything on uh on friday at pro day but i you know keon and johnny ran routes uh, i thought keon he didn't run a 40 but i thought he looked really good who's uh, throwing the ball brock glenn no which kidding. i thought All was right. cool so nice. i i i uh actually told ira in the middle of it because brock glenn was throwing to uh Jaheim Bell, Johnny Wilson, and Keon Coleman for Pro Day. And I wonder if he went to him at all and was like, yeah, man, could have used y'all in Miami. <laughs> I think, think I would have looked a little better if I got to throw to you two, you three against Georgia. But, hey, I'm, I'm cool to help out. Uh, I was going to say, no. shoot, I thought maybe it would have been like, I would have liked to have you out of practice yesterday throwing the ball to no, you. No, no. I, hey, could have yeah. used you in South Florida against yeah. Georgia. I yeah. think the score would have been a little different if you three gentlemen were on the field. Um, but, yeah, I uh, it's a cool experience for him, too, to get to be a quarterback for a pro day. But, yeah, uh, Jari and Jones did position drills. Um, Akeem did. Renardo Green, they all did position drills. Fist did pro- position drills, too. Um, and I think he did. I mean, it's Fist, so I, I assume he did well. And then Trey Benson had the big – he just did bench, but – he benched 23 times, which I think he was the only running back to run under a 4-4 and have over 20. I mean, and have over 20 reps of the 225. So it's Trey Benson, man. He's a he's an athletic freak. So uh, yeah, it was a, it was a cool weekend uh, just for the the football program as a whole. I thought the the future, the past, the present, all of it combined into one weekend was cool. And you're right about the brick thing because if you guys don't know, I think we explained this last year. 
but if you're around uh, the the practice facility and more Doak, if you're on those sidewalks, you see the all there these all American bricks that any all American in any sport they get a brick set up, and uh, you know it's, it's always just been done. There's never been any fanfare at all, as far as I know. But I guess it was Norvell's idea or somebody's idea to be like, no, when we get a football player that gets his own brick, let's have a little celebration for it. And mm-hmm. so they did. And uh, yeah. they did it this year with, like you said, Rosenberry. Who was it? Jamie Robinson and Jared? And first. Yep. And first, yeah. Um, let's let's live in a world where at 8 p.m. last night, Daquan, Daquan Davis committed to Florida State. Um, go to wordchant.com and see if that was actually – reality or not, but he was at one time committed to Providence 6'1", 173 point guard uh, playing for overtime elite in Baltimore. Uh, that would, that help. That'd be a nice little get for, for the Knowles if they were able to beat out Georgia tech, but uh, we are keeping an eye on what's going on with basketball, but there's so many guys that are obviously in the portal and they're mentioning 13 teams. So when these things become real, real is kind of when we'll dive in and, and get you the scoop on these things. But it was a Sunday when we recorded the show and I was out of town um and yeah it's march madness weekend so cut me some slack question mark sure sure uh but also uh we should say that primo is in the portal oh really yeah primo is in the portal dante green uh went in the portal yeah um i assume that won't be the last two names that we hear in fact there might be some that are in there by the time you guys listen to this but uh it's gonna be look whether they got the kid or not I don't know what you're expecting a, a freshman, a six-one freshman point guard to be able to. I mean, maybe he's awesome, but it's it's not going to be a difference maker in turning this program from a 500 team into a tournament team or a Sweet 16 team. All that's in the portal, mm. and they're all out there. So that's what we'll be monitoring a lot over the next month. And what could be, we don't know, but it could be Leonard Hamilton's last year. We'd all like him to go out with a bang and uh and go get some guys that can go win some games. Shout out to softball. Uh, mm. They won their games in run rule fashion on Friday and Saturday, 13 to four, and then 10 to five. Uh, they were up big in their third game on Sunday as we uh, wrapped up this show. But uh, Lonnie, don't melt down like Link. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, love you, Link. Love you, Link. And, and yeah, Jinx, I, I, think playing, either, I, don't, I don't think Pitt softball is the equivalent of Cle- Clemson baseball. By the way, how about that guy? The dude from Michigan. He can coach, huh? Clemson's baseball coach. Oh, back it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. He, I mean, golly, they're, they're, I mean, they're, are they like 22 and two? Um, so there's no shame in losing those games. And you lost to a really good team that beat Duke two out of three on the road. And Duke's very good. It's just, again, the bullpen. I, I don't know that a Florida state bullpen has ever had a series like that since I've been alive. I mean, that was even last year, they didn't lose a game where they were up seven runs in the ninth. Um, so yeah, they, they've got some, uh, they got some, t- they got to look in the mirror, Aslan, and they got to rise up. Somebody's got to decide they want to throw strikes and be that dude and not melt down on the road in a, in a tough environment. That's, you gotta I'm not sure panicked at all. I'm, maybe so I didn't get to watch any of it, but I'm not panicked at all. I'm not, I'm not happy. Obviously I'm not, well, you concerned. just like, you know, you, if you win two out of three at Clemson, well, you, oh, yeah. by Rocket the end ship. of the year, you're, yeah. you got a chance to be a, uh, a, a top seed. eight national seed. Yeah. But you just got swept. And who knows what's going to happen. I mean, you hope you win. If you win against Florida on Tuesday, you feel pretty good. But, man, you you blew an opportunity, I think, is what it what it boils down to. You blew an opportunity to really distance yourself, separate yourself in the conference, but also, like, really, really hammer home a chance that you're going to be ho- – you could host a Super Regional. Yeah. And that you just blew that. And those are losses. Uh, bad losses because of how they happen. So that's uh, – uh, yeah, just get the pitching figured out, Link. Defense, love it. In well, let, let me rephrase. Infield defense, I love it. C- c- competent guys, really good infield defense, and the offense is uh, clearly going to be good all season. That's you got Tibbs is a major leaguer. Cam Smith is a major leaguer. Jaime Ferrer is really good. Uh, every ball Ma- uh, Max Williams hits is a hundred miles an hour off the bat. Didn't didn't just hit a home run and had another double that went. I think he hit it one hundred eleven off the wall. He had a three-run bomb on Saturday, like up and down. Lodi's hit a home run. I think, honestly, this isn't a lot. I think Faro was the only starter of the nine guys that played uh, that didn't hit a home run this weekend. Jordan Williams hit a dinger? 
No, but he didn't start. Okay. He oh, came he's in, he oh, came God, in as a defensive replacement. Oh, yeah. that's even worse. Yeah, you don't like when your defensive replacement falls down on the biggest play yeah. of, the, of the game out there. But, yeah, Ferrer hit uh, – Jaime hit two home runs. Tibbs hit two. Cam Smith hit two. I mean, good night. They, they, they're loaded offensively. They're a fun team to watch and could be really entertaining games, guys. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of 10-8 to 8 games, apparently, if the if the bullpen doesn't figure it out. Uh, Gators coming off a series win at defending champ LSU. That's not, Hey, great. you know what? That's good for uh Florida state's RPI, right? If cool. they use that, right. It. But speaking of blown opportunities, uh, shout out Colorado. Thanks for taking out the Gators in the tournament. Appreciate that. Hope that's stung Gators. Yes, Hope it's stung. Did. Just kidding. Hope that, Hey, I wish nothing but the best for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a wrap for us. Practice. Back Tuesday, uh, we'll be back out there, but plenty of content in the meantime over at warchant.com, the ultimate symbol sports source. Michael Langston and Matt Lassier got you covered and updated. Ben Spicer as well with all the recruits that were on campus this past weekend. Go check it out over at warchant.com. For Corey, I'm Aslan. Thanks for listening to Wake Up War Champ presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.